I'll say this. Being on air for almost 14 years, everybody's always saying the New World Order's making their big, hot move right now. And so just bunker down or get ready. And a lot of people then kind of get in a catatonic state and don't fight it because they imagine instant gratification, instant victory against the corruption, or they think it's futile. The truth is they wouldn't be trying to shut down our free speech if they were already all powerful. They are not invincible. And there's a huge awakening taking place, and we've got to believe in ourselves enough be able to defeat this thing. I know one thing, standing up is not futile. Alan Watt, our guest at the bottom of the hour, really appreciate all the time he's given us today. Dave in California, then Deborah, Steve, Gary, and others. Dave, you're on the air. Welcome. Another great show, as usual. And hello, Alan. Hello. Since we're talk I'll make it really fast, guys. Since we're talking about eugenics, I once heard a wise man say, judge a society by how it treats its most vulnerable members. And regarding that, in California alone, 400,000 independent, productive people with limited disabilities who only need a little assistance in their own homes to safely prepare meals, take their medications, do heavy chores, etc., are being totally cut out of Schwarzenegger's budget. This means that most of them will have to be warehoused in convalescent, privatized FEMA camps, basically, that cost three times more, where they have no rights at all, we're still, but see, that's the profit. That's the profit. There's plenty of money to institutionalize you, plenty of money to get you in the system and euthanize you, which they're already doing nationwide, Wall Street Journal admits. There's plenty of money for all of that. There's just not money for you to be self-sufficient. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. And worse still, there's only 30,000 convalescent beds available in the state, so I guess they all just get to die. I see this as Schwarzenegger making his eugenicist bones in California so he can run for president. In 2012, what do you guys think about that? I agree. Go ahead. I think that's probably the way it is, too. Um, there's no doubt about it, but we've got to understand when these guys talk about useless eaters, and that's what Russell and others have called people who are not completely physically or mentally healthy, that's the standard eugenicist talk, uh, then they want to eradicate them. And you'll notice in that big, uh, uh, supposedly open to the public conference they had, that Obama set out on the, the, the Comparative Effectiveness uh, Council to do with health care. They're going to slash back on all types of health care and find alternate effective, effective means, that's what they say. And uh, I even put a video up of uh, Obama's appointee walking off when he was challenged by Executive Intelligence Review uh, about being a eugenicist himself and wanting to bring down the population. He was on the panel. He walked off in the video. Uh, yeah, Anton Chaikin, Tarpley's former partner uh, in, in, in authoring books, brought up the real stuff. And, and for those who don't believe this, even Bloomberg reported it. In the book written by Daschle, who was going to be the head of health care, he says, yes, if you're an old person, you don't get the same access a young person does. You're not as valuable. This isn't some right-wing thing attacking socialized health care. This is a fact. This is... Socialized health care is an aspirin for a heart attack. Obama is in there, and I appreciate your call, sir, pushing it right now. Why don't you explain to folks what universal health care means? It means universal eugenics death care. It does. It you understand that Britain was one of the first countries in Canada to bring up socialized health care. Uh, Thompson was the guy who brought it out in Canada. He's up, he's up on Wikipedia right now because he was a top eugenicist who talked openly about culling off the, in, the unfit, the infirm. And, and useless eaters. He brought health care into Canada, socialized medicine. Where I live here, you can't get a doctor. You cannot get one. And what they prescribe in Canada for pretty well all problems is simply painkillers. Just go home. If you don't feel the pain, the disease can progress and get worse, and you'll die. That's basically what it is. It's cost-effectiveness because socialized medicine comes under a government policy. Government policy is the key. And, and it's all to do with economics. But meanwhile, the elites are going to get all the life extension technologies. That's why they called medicine a practice. They cold-bloodedly practice on us and then develop what works, keep the good stuff for themselves, nothing for us but death. Very cold-blooded. And they believe that's why they're the scientific risen man or the illumined man, because they can cold-bloodedly slaughter a CR pain, just like the first psychiatrist lobotomizing people with ice picks. Acolablue.com is the premier 
atmospheric water generator grabs the moisture right out of the air, seven and a half gallons a day with her smaller unit, very affordable, then passes it through seven filters, including carbon and reverse osmosis, neutral pH, no pollutants or toxins, absolutely the best water you've ever had. Literally, drink it. 800-691-6043, 800-691-6043, or acolablue.com. How do you spell that? E C O L O blue.com acola blue.com or banners up on infowars.com and prison planet.com all right hurrying through your calls for alan watt i'm alex jones your host we're live here monday through friday from 11 a.m to 3 p.m central standard time that's 12 noon to 4 p.m eastern and of course that's 9 a.m to 1 p.m pacific 10 to 2 mountain We have a free podcast downloaded by over 150 plus thousand people a day. If you go to InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com, you can click on the free podcast and download it to your MP3 or iPod device. Listen how you want, when you want, where you want. Uh, And we're getting a lot of new AM and FM affiliates, a lot of new listeners on the Internet. Uh, We're just exploding. And that is heartening. It's also a little bit scary. Because there's a lot of uh, black ops going on against us. A lot of people posing as us going around saying horrible racist things on the web. Uh, A lot of people pulling other dirty tricks. Uh, And uh, a lot of media coming after us, mainstream media coming after us. And that really is our badge of courage, the red badge of courage, as they say. I get so many emails going, you woke me up, but now I know your new world order. So that's kind of how the COINTELPRO works as well. We're here just covering facts, information, data. You make what decisions you want from it. COINTELPRO spends all their time saying how everybody else are government agents. There's actually not that many government agents, uh, as people would think. They're just there getting us all to fight with each other. Alan, I want to spend a few minutes on that, the dirty tricks you've been through, so we can try to get people to be aware of this and to stop spending their time ninnying and infighting uh, and also not believe something when they hear your voice edited weird or changed. They do that to me as well. We were talking about it. Or when they see sites that look like yours but aren't yours but don't list their URLs, that only helps them, which then list link to white supremacist stuff. We've proven that the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center and other groups are tied in. In the case of Southern Poverty Law Center, are running white supremacist groups. FBI doesn't just infiltrate white supremacists. They found them. They run them. Then they always try to act like they're the liberty movement, the freedom movement, so the media can then demonize us. Every time I have a big national reporter here, they ask me, do you like Hitler, Alex? And then I say, no, uh, I think he's really kind of goofy. Oh, you you do like him, don't you? Don't you? You know, so this is really something they're trying to put on us because they don't want us bringing everybody in together for liberty and freedom and awakening against the tyranny of the globalist. And so... I'm really seeing them go after myself and you and a few other uh, people. And then a lot of well-meaning people have kind of fallen in to the bashing one particular group or the other. And that's how they want us is factionalized. Alan Watt. Yeah, it's true. Uh, A good documentary was done on the white supremacist groups a long time ago by the BBC uh, where they showed you uh, different uh, police outfits raiding some of the headquarters where they were having meetings, and one famous one, uh, they turned out 200 people from inside this meeting, and uh, by the end of the night, they'd only kept a couple and charged them. Everyone else, it turned out, belonged to other departments of, of U.S. police, gov- uh, police uh, organizations that were, that were all infiltrating. In other words, the entire membership was made up almost of all government agents uh, trying to find the real ones. And the two that they arrested were just guys off the street that came in for a free coffee. Uh, so it, it, it's common knowledge that, uh, that so the white supremacist groups have been funded from the beginning by government um, agencies because they're very handy to help smear people by association if they can do it. If they can't take you down by what you're saying, they have to do a character assassination upon you. And I, I've had videos up, uh, up there. I've seen them where people will take different words that you say, string them together, easy to do with a with, uh, computer, and have you saying completely erroneous things all together. But the, there is an organized effort out there, and a funded effort, I should say, too, to, to help uh, defame. I've had fake sites go up that you'd almost 
where were mine. Uh, and you had to go into them, take the links off them to find out who was behind it. And they, they went right to the, the usual thing. It's just the Jews, and it was anti-Semitic and so on. But, but for someone looking in, they, they would have thought it was genuine. And, that's and then, so I noticed I'm attacked by the ADL, the Southern Poverty Law Center. The first person they attacked when Poplowski shot those cops was me. Within hours, they fed my name off his computer, thousands of sites, to attack me. And then it turned out that Poplowski didn't actually didn't like me. It looks like it was being federally handled, just like Von Brun. And so that's kind of creepy to know I'm the first guy they're trying to go after now. And then meanwhile, they have the white supremacists after me. Because I won't play the Southern Poverty Law Center's game yeah. of making it racial politics. I'm trying to appeal to everybody. Big tent, waking up the mass. They're desperate.